Before the first fish swam, before plants grew, before Earth had an atmosphere you could survive, life began, and no one knows how. Some say it started in deep sea vents, where boiling water met minerals in the dark. Others say it fell from space, delivered by frozen comets like a cosmic infection. But here's what we do know. It started on a planet that looked nothing like the one we know now. The oceans were acidic, the air was toxic, lightning carved scars across the sky, and the ground was shaking, burning and bleeding gas all at once. It wasn't Earth. It was alien. Yet somehow, in that chaos, something formed, not a creature, not even a cell, just chemistry that started acting alive. And once it started, it never stopped. It divided, it grew, it evolved. And billions of years later, it became everything. You, me, every species we've ever known. But it all goes back to that one unsolved mystery. What sparked life? Four and a half billion years ago, Earth wasn't a blue planet. It was orange, red, black. The surface boiled with molten rock. Meteor impacts weren't rare, they were constant. Entire continents didn't exist. Oceans barely had time to form before being vaporized again. There was no oxygen, no ozone, no protection from the sun's radiation. The air was thick with carbon dioxide, methane, ammonia, a poisonous cocktail to anything we'd call life today. But back then, it was the norm. The sky glowed from constant volcanic eruptions, ash darkened the sun, and lightning tore through the clouds in endless storms that lasted for centuries. This was Earth during the Hadean Eon, named after Hades. For good reason. Imagine standing on that surface, if you could, the heat would strip skin from bone, the air would burn your lungs, and the sky, it wasn't blue, it glowed, like molten iron under pressure. Meteors punched into the ground with the force of nuclear weapons, shaking the landscape and boiling away newly formed seas. Volcanoes didn't erupt, they bled fire. Earth didn't look like home, it looked like a warning. And yet, Beneath the chaos, something was changing. Water collected. Not much, but enough. Shallow pools, tide pools, hydrothermal vents at the bottom of the ocean. Blasting, scalding, mineral-rich fluids into the darkness. There were no trees, no fish, no bacteria, nothing, just chemistry. And deep within that chaos, inside cracks in rock, were pools thick with metal and heat, something strange began to form. Chains of carbon, simple molecules, then complex ones. Still not life, but close, very close. We've searched the stars, we've drilled into the oldest rocks on Earth. We've even recreated ancient atmospheres in sealed lab flasks. And yet, no one truly knows how life began. But there are clues and each one tells a different version of the same story, a lifeless planet, with just enough chaos to spark something extraordinary. One theory begins deep below the ocean floor. In the lightless depths, hydrothermal vents still rage, spewing mineral-rich water at over 700 degrees Fahrenheit. Here, some scientists believe, life found its spark. The theory goes like this, Tiny pores inside rocks acted like primitive cells. Heat provided energy. Minerals acted like catalysts. And inside these microscopic chambers, simple molecules collided, bonded, replicated. Not life as we know it, but life in its most primal form. But what if life didn't begin in the dark, but under lightning-lit skies? According to the primordial soup theory, Early Earth was covered in shallow chemical pools. When lightning struck or UV rays pulsed from above, complex molecules began to form. In 1953, the Miller-Urey experiment simulated this environment. 
and within days created amino acids, the building blocks of life. No cells, no DNA, but it was a start. Then there's a theory that rewrites the story completely. What if life didn't start here at all? Panspermia, the idea that life, or at least its ingredients, came from space. Locked inside comets or meteorites, frozen in time. We've already found organic molecules in meteorites, amino acids, nucleobases, even sugars. So maybe Earth didn't create life. Maybe it received it. From the stars. Still, some researchers believe the answer lies in the Earth itself, but not in oceans or lightning. They point to clay, not as life, but as scaffolding. Ancient clay surfaces may have helped organize organic molecules, aligning them, catalyzing them, providing the structure they needed to take the next step. In this version, clay wasn't alive. But it was the stage where life's first act began. Four theories, four different paths, each with its champions, each with its flaws. But one question remains. How did dead matter cross the line into something that lived? Because between lifeless molecules and the first cell, there's a gap no one has fully closed. And somewhere in that gap was our first ancestor, our beginning. If life did begin, somewhere between boiling vents, chemical storms, or drifting comets, then something came next, something that worked. Something that lasted, not a creature, not a cell we'd recognize, but something alive enough to change everything. Scientists call it L-U-C-A, the last universal common ancestor. It wasn't the first living thing. It was simply the one that left a legacy. Everything alive today, every animal, plant, fungus, microbe, shares something with Luca. It's our genetic atom, the root of the tree, the quiet beginning before evolution exploded outward. But Luca wasn't advanced. It probably floated freely in water. It had no brain, no limbs, no skeleton, just a fragile membrane holding together molecules that knew how to copy themselves. Luca used RNA or primitive DNA. It may have used iron and sulfur as fuel, it didn't breathe, it didn't eat, it reacted. And somehow, it persisted. We don't have Luca's body, but we have its fingerprints. In the genes shared by bacteria and humans. In the structures every cell still uses. In the molecular software still running inside us. Luca lived over 3.5 billion years ago. And it's never really died. It just became everything. It lived in a world almost unimaginable to us. A world of iron-rich seas and volcanic seabeds. A planet wrapped in darkness, where radiation still pierced the surface. Luca may have lived near the same hydrothermal vents where life first formed. Or perhaps in tide pools, clinging to rocks in the shadows of chemical chaos. Its world was microscopic. But its legacy? Massive. Luca wasn't just an organism, it was a turning point. The moment when chemistry became biology. But before Luca, before membranes or RNA, there was the great unknown. The transitional world between chaos and self-replication. And here lies one of the most mysterious ideas of all. The world of protocells. Protocells were not alive in the way we define life today. They had no genome, no true metabolism. But they formed naturally, tiny bubbles of lipids floating in water, capable of absorbing molecules, growing, and even dividing. Like primitive containers, they protected chemical reactions happening inside. Some may have survived longer than others. Some may have evolved by accident. And slowly, the line between chemistry and biology began to blur. Imagine millions of these fragile structures drifting through warm, shallow pools. Some pop within seconds. 
Others linger, accidentally taking in the right sequence of molecules. Over time, they begin to store information, react, adapt. And in one of those bubbles, just one, life begins. But there's more. Recent experiments have shown that in the right conditions, simple RNA molecules can not only form spontaneously, but begin to catalyze their own replication. These findings have added momentum to what scientists call the RNA world hypothesis. The idea that before DNA, RNA ruled. A self-copying molecule that could encode information and act as an enzyme. It wasn't perfect, but it didn't need to be. Because perfection wasn't required, survival was. And in the relentless pressure cooker of early Earth, survival meant adaptation. Every mistake was a test, every mutation a roll of the dice. What we now call life was born from trillions of tiny failures, and that's the quiet beauty of this story. Because life didn't appear all at once, it wasn't magic, it was chemistry that refused to give up. And now, billions of years later, we're here, wondering where we came from. Maybe that's the final gift of life's origin. Not just existence, but the ability to question it. And to wonder who else might be asking. We know more about the surface of Mars than we do about how life started on our own planet. For over a century, the greatest minds in biology, chemistry, and astronomy have tried to answer a question that seems simple. How did life begin? And every time they get close, the trail disappears. Because there's no fossil record for molecules, no bones, no shells, no clues etched in stone. The earliest evidence of life we've found. Microscopic fossils in 3.5 billion year old rock. But even those may have evolved from something earlier, something we'll never see. And there's something else. Each theory, the vents, the soup, the comets, the clay, explains part of the puzzle, but not all of it. Maybe we're asking the wrong question. Maybe life didn't start once. Maybe it started many times, in different places, different ways, and only one version survived. Or maybe it started and ended again and again until something stuck. Some scientists even wonder, what if life is inevitable? Not a miracle, not an accident, but the natural result of chemistry given enough time, energy, and pressure. If that's true, then life might not be rare. It might be everywhere. And if it's everywhere, it might not be finished. Could life begin again, right now? Maybe not here, not on modern Earth. Our atmosphere is different now. Our oceans are full of competition. Any new life would likely be eaten before it could evolve. But on Europa, Enceladus, Titan, or on some rogue planet orbiting a distant star, if the recipe is heat, water, and time, then the universe is a kitchen and life might just be simmering in other corners, somewhere between fire and ice. In a world poisoned by its own atmosphere, life began. We don't know the exact moment. We may never find the place, but we know the consequences. Because once it started, it couldn't be stopped. That first spark became bacteria, then colonies, then animals, then predators, and then us, and still, we don't know what started it. Maybe it was chance. Maybe it was math. Maybe it was something else entirely. But the question remains, why did it happen? Why here? Why then? And if the same chaos exists on other planets, if the same chemistry is happening right now, somewhere far beyond our sky, are we alone? Or are we just the first ones asking? Life didn't begin with a roar. It began in silence, in darkness, in chemistry. But that silence gave birth to a planet that could wonder about itself. And now we wonder about everything. 
because the real question isn't just where life came from, it's where it's going and what else might be out there asking the same thing.